What is going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is John. This is Killer Details. On this channel, we do in-depth product reviews and talking head opinion-based videos like this one. Today, we're doing another iPhone video. We're going to talk about the transition from Nano SIM to eSIM on the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. So recently, Apple announced that instead of using Nano SIM, instead we're going to start using a built-in eSIM, which all you probably will need to do to activate it is log into your account on your uh, carrier's website and activate it, or maybe call a certain number and that number will activate your phone. Uh, no longer will you have to remove the SIM card tray at the side of the phone. This is an iPhone 12 Pro. As you can see, it's got the SIM card tray at the bottom of the device. It's right here. Uh, no longer will you have to uh, remove the SIM card to activate it if you're going overseas or maybe if you're switching carriers. So uh, since 2018, iPhones have had eSIMs built in with nano SIM card tray slots so that you can either go overseas or simply activate the phone on your network. Uh, in my case, I bought this two years ago and um, activated it by putting the SIM card inside. Actually, it came with the SIM card already inside. All I had to do was call a phone number and um, they activated it. But one of the reasons why I support this move from uh, Nano SIM to eSIM is a pretty simple one. Um, it mainly has to do with water resistance. Uh, I am someone who counts on this phone uh, being reliable. And uh, now that I own the phone, uh, which is uh, something I recently did was purchase it or buy it outright, I have full ownership of it. What I count on is this phone lasting another year and a half, two years if I need it to. Uh, and that I mainly uh, attribute to uh, keeping the phone dry. Uh, sometimes you drop it in a pool. Uh, sometimes it gets wet. Maybe uh, you're outside and it's raining and it's in your pocket and it gets waterlogged. Um, I think what's important is that the phone remains as durable as possible so that it can, uh, I can use it for as long as possible. Because at the end of the day, this is a thousand dollars, right? So I need a phone that costs this much to last me three or four years. And the way that you can get a phone to last three or four years is if you can make it water resistant, if you can give it extremely hard glass that doesn't crack. Now, I'm not saying this phone has that, but uh, you know, Apple has been hell bent these past couple of years on making their phones as durable as possible and marketing them that way. And one way that they can market their phones this way or better market them this way is by removing the SIM tray, which is one less area of the phone where water can get in. So uh, I think in the next couple of years, you're gonna see iPhones become even more and more durable. Uh, and this is the first step. Uh, even though people are outraged, I think, or maybe frustrated or annoyed that Apple is moving from a nano SIM tray to an eSIM. There's no more SIM tray. It's not as easy as taking the nano SIM out and swapping it for another card to activate it on another network if you're going overseas. Um, I think it's better that way. And mainly it's because the phone is more water resistant now. So my name is John. I really hope you enjoyed that talking head video. I know I kind of came out of left field with the whole water resistance thing, um, but uh, I think it is for the better. It will be for the better because um, technically it's one less uh, place in the phone that water can get in now that the iPhone 14 does not have a nano SIM tray. Uh, my name is John. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon to get notified when I post to YouTube. This has been an opinion-based talking head video. Why transitioning from nano SIM to eSIM is good. Thanks again so much for tuning in. My name is John. I will see you in the next video.